I'm with good company, I love and shall until I die. Grush who lost, but not. Hi, York, how are you? Everything okay with you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Just sitting here in the, on, a, on a couch in my office at the university and answering some questions for you. And <laughs> uh, um, um, Memoria has uh, just been released. How have the, the reactions been so far? The reactions have been great so far because it's something really special. Due to that, we never did a Blu-ray, we never did a video release so far. Means uh, like a live DVD or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is our first one. And next to that, that it's our first one. It's an acoustic one. So I think two times special. Yeah, it's 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 really a, a special release. And the, I, I think that to you, it must have been a, a special night or in the case, uh, two special nights. How do you come up with uh, with this idea? Uh, the idea was born for sure due to the COVID situation, because um, after we came back uh, from the double headliner tour together with Rage, uh, early 2020, uh, there was already another headliner tour for us, booked for April 2020 with the Last Night album. Uh, but due to COVID, we were not able to, to make this tour happening. And uh, so we thought, okay, we have to find something else to, to stay in contact with the fans and to give them perhaps some new material. And that's the reason why we uh, had the idea to, to produce an acoustic uh, concert because we always got really great feedback when we included one or two or three acoustic songs during our metal shows in the past. And so the idea was born. Um, we did a crowdfunding campaign. The people loved the idea. So we had the budget to produce it in the end. But then for sure, the second COVID wave came in with a second lockdown. So we had to postpone the concert again. And then uh, a third lockdown was coming in and we had to postpone it again. So that's the reason why the idea was born in 2020. Mm -hmm. But the concerts took place in May. 2022 but i really think that the wait was uh it worth it it was worth waiting for it yeah it really was worth it and, and you keep uh, you kept uh, very well in contact with your fans not only uh with this uh, uh memoria shows and now the release but also you've been really busy lately you know with the uh, workings and with fallen sanctuary and also in your uh, personal life with a uh, uh, new book released this year i think right in uh, may or june and yeah two Two books this year, yeah, two books. But like I said, you know, officially I'm not in War of Kings. It's just my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, which are your, your plans now for the future? Uh, we just uh, finished the songwriting uh, for the upcoming Serenity album, which will be out in summer, late summer 2023. So we will enter the studio for a regular metal album again. Uh, in February, March next year. And so the album will be out, like I said, somewhere in summer. Then we're going to do some festivals in summer. Um, and then after that, we will do a tour to present the new album. Yeah, I can't wait for, the, for that new album. And uh, I hope that during that year, you can come to, to Portugal. You know, I would love to see you. I'm really a big fan. Of not only Serenity, but of, of your work in Serenity, for sure. You know, I would love Thank to Thank you very it. much. It would be really great. You know, it's it's always a problem because the, the price has increased a lot. Also for the Nightliner, for crew and for everything, transport costs and so on. Uh, but we hope to see you. Yeah, I hope to see you too. Now, uh, moving back to, to Memoria. Memoria was a two-night show. Which was recorded and it's now released? The first night or the second night? Both nights were recorded because uh, <clears throat> we didn't re-record anything. That means there were no voices, no guitars, no guitar tracks or whatever re-recorded. Um, it's everything completely live. So for sure, we had uh, we had to do two shows with the with the exactly the same set list to have a backup. If something, for example, technical wise, will fuck up. Uh, that we have another show, you know, where we can cut. But in the end, the second show, from the atmosphere, from the video material, 
and also from our side means music wise was yeah let's say so good that we took only the second night but both nights were recorded but we just took the second night as as material yeah maybe also more chemistry in the second night you know second try yeah yeah sure 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 so we were more secure uh, on the second night and uh, the people were more enthusiastic on the second night and so everything was a bit better on the second night yeah and, and during the gig did, very, did everything uh, go as went anything uh, that didn't go as it should be <laughs> yeah for example i destroyed some candles during the concert <laughs> you know we, we we put many candles on the stage and i just wanted to remove a, a chair uh between two songs and i crushed uh, a candle um i don't know a chandelier uh on stage and it fell down and uh, the candles broke <laughs> so the whole venue was loving like hell and first we really asked ourselves if we should cut it out from the live blu-ray but mm -hmm. we didn't it's still in there <laughs> oh, it was on the second night yeah it was yeah. the second time. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm going to love to see that once I get my, my copy. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, how did you select the, the songs for this, uh, this, this show? Yeah. Uh, we had, for sure, two things in mind, how to select it. First was uh, that we really wanted to, to give a best of uh, set list to the Serenity fans. And we knew from the from the past uh, which songs they really uh, love, which songs we have to play. For example, Legacy of Tudors, Lionheart, uh, Velatum, Fairy Tales, and so on. These are the typical favorite Serenity songs they always want to hear. And so they had to be in there. And then the second thing was that we took uh, songs where we really could imagine to rearrange them in an acoustic version. Because, I mean, if you have really a heavy track with heavy riffs and so on, it's more difficult to rearrange everything in an acoustic thing than having um, a folk-influenced ballad or a folk-influenced metal song like Legacy of Tudors. For example, in my opinion, Legacy of Tudors on Memoria in this acoustic version is even better than the original it's better. one. better. It is. Yeah. So It blew my yeah. mind completely when I listened to it. I already love the... The original version but that that funk version it's it's wonderful yeah it's really cool it's really cool and i love it really i really love it a lot yeah and uh, one thing that i found curious was that you uh, you had songs from all of your heroes you have journey's hand that was just on your uh second demo i think and then yeah. you also have uh in the name of scotland that was your last single uh yeah. did you also try to have like this a wide range of uh, of yeah. time between the, the songs. Yeah, like I said, uh, it was really important for us to to give an overview. There is every album with one song on Memoria, at least you know. So mm -hmm. all studio albums are represented. Even a complete unreleased song called "Changing Times," and Scotland also not released so far on any CD. Yeah, and uh, do you think that uh, like in the name of Scott, in the name of Scotland, could be in your uh, your next album, like as a bonus track or something yeah. like that? Yeah, we will for sure uh, remix it and uh, put it as a bonus track on the upcoming album. Yeah, and uh, now that I also uh, mentioned the Journey's Hand, uh, during the show you you dedicated Journey's Hand to uh, Fabio's uh, sister who uh, recently yeah. passed away. Why did you yeah. choose uh, that song in particular? Because the name, I think, says it says everything. Journey's end, you know. And sadly, her journey here on Earth ended. Yeah. But we are quite sure that somewhere up there, she is having another journey. And she for sure was watching our shows. Yeah, I, I think she was. And uh, that song was included specifically because of that? Or was it already there and then you just... No, it was, it was already there. But because we only got notice of her... Uh, passing, I think, three or four days before the concert. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was already in the set list, it was already planned, but it was sadly somehow really fitting to dedicate mm -hmm. it to her. 
Yeah, it was written in the stars. And uh, yep. these songs really have uh, incredible arrangements, like I said, uh, like Legacy of Tudor is just an example. How did you arrange these songs? Um, we arranged it together with Chris, our guitar player, and together with Fabio and his uh, girlfriend Katja, who is the flute player, uh, and or who was also the flute player in the concert. And uh, we also had the help of our orchestra guy called Luki, Lukas Knöbel, uh, from Styria here in Austria. He also helped us to, to rearrange everything a bit here, to make it sounding really different but uh, still somehow keeping the original vibe. Yeah, yeah it, it, you did a, a great job, as I, as I said before. Thank you. Uh, uh, one thing that I, I think was missing was that, as you said, all albums are represented. But one thing I, I think that was missing was uh, more songs like from uh, Codex Atlanticus. I think that they would fit really well, you know, because it isn't such a, a heavy album. Uh, did you consider adding uh, more, more songs? Yeah, but in the end, you know, that, that's a problem when you nearly are 20 years already in the business. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we have too many songs. So in the end, we had to choose. And uh, with Spirit in the Flesh, there is one song from Codex Atlanticus on it. But for sure, uh, the final chapter and so on would have fit. And, and also some other stuff like, um, I don't know. Yeah, there would have been many, many songs yeah. fitting it, fitting there. But you could yeah. make you could have make four show four shows yeah. with completely different uh, uh, soundtrack and yeah, sure. it would still be amazing. I think. <laughs> now, uh, between these songs, there are some uh, historical introductions. Uh, do this uh, uh, memorial album follow any uh, historical order? Not really an order, but um, it was very important for us to have somebody on board. Uh, telling and explaining a bit uh, the meaning of the song. Uh, the songs uh, are, like always within Serenity, about history. And I really think that adding PJ, uh, the narrator here to the set, was a fantastic idea because it's really even more epic, in my opinion, yeah. when somebody's telling you before the story the background about the song and then you play the song and so there is a strong connection yeah and i think it was a, a brilliant idea too uh now uh, apart from uh, from uh, her you also have some other guests can you introduce them and uh, tell uh, why you invited them sure um i mean before i introduce everybody i would say first of all it was very important for us to intro or to to invite only people only musicians and guests um, with a strong connection to Serenity. So, you know, for sure, nowadays, with money, you can hire nearly everybody, let's say, yeah. for having a guest spot. Um, but it was for us very important, only having people there um, who have something in common with us. You know, for example, Clemi, she was part of Serenity. Um, mm -hmm. Then, for example, Marco who is really one of my best friends in the meantime and uh, who is writing a lot of songs with me and who is also the main guy together with me in Foreign Sanctuary and mm -hmm. so on and so on. So then there was Michele from Visions of Atlantis and from Temperance. We also became really good friends when we were touring together several times in the past. Um, then there was uh, Nick, the drummer of Ad Infinitum, who is uh, who was our replace or substitute guitar player back in Serenity because he stepped in several times when Chris was on tour with Beyond the Black and was not available for touring. And uh, also Katrin, the, 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 the female singer in Changing Fate, uh, she used to sing with me for quite a long time in a local cover band here. And I really love her voice. And so it was just logical to invite these people and Sasha Pet is our producer from the last night album also a good friend in the meantime uh he and his band masters of ceremony he was uh, supporting us on the last on the latest tour with serenity in april this year so it was somehow a family meeting you know yeah and and i think this is visible on tour that we really 
have a lot of fun. There, there are no strangers around. You know, all these people connecting, uh, all these people involved in this project were connected somehow to each other before the shows. Yeah, and um, Marco sang in uh, Broken Dreams. That's the only song in a memoria that isn't from uh, Serenity. Uh, why yeah. did you decide to, to include it? Uh, because I really, first of all, I really love this song. In my opinion, this is one of the best songs um, I ever did. Uh, in this case, together with Marco. So this was really important for me to edit. And um, Mark was already there because uh, he was also a special guest on Set the World on Fire. Because Set the World on Fire was written by Mark and by me. So, yeah, and Set the, the World on Fire, uh, I, I thought that you have also uh, Herbie Hagen singing because he sings in the, in the original version. Uh, yeah, did you thought true. of uh, inviting him? Uh, to be honest, no, because um, when he recorded the stuff, you know, we, we didn't even meet. So um, there was not a such strong connections than uh, it it is to the other ones. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, one of the the things that you you've been doing recently are uh, the shows with the uh, Foreman Sanctuary. Uh, and uh, one of the things that you did was some acoustic shows. And I think that you are uh, still uh, doing those. Um, can you consider that those acoustic shows were like a, a what gave you the idea to, to do Memoria? Uh, like I said, it was the COVID situation that gave us the idea. I mean, we always added some acoustic songs uh, when we were touring with our metal set list. Um, and due to the COVID thing, where the restrictions for some months were like, okay, you can do a concert, but only with seated uh, audience and so on. That was the main thing why we said, okay, let's, let's do a, a, an acoustic thing. That in the end, it took us two years to really make it happen. That was not the plan. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, right now, are you planning on making any other uh, shows like Memoria in the future? Um, we talked about it, that for sure we're going to do in the future uh, a complete acoustic tour. Um, but only, or that would, our, that would be our plan, in special locations. Not, for example, in the normal metal clubs, but in churches, in theaters, something like this, you know? Yeah, it looks like a great idea. You should you should get that going. Yeah, and uh, well, we already talked about your uh, your touring plans for uh, the the next album that is coming with the uh, metal touring plans. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Jorg. It was an honor. Uh, would you like to send any message to your Portuguese fans? Yeah, uh, a message. First of all, thank you very much for the support for nearly 20 years already. Man, 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 time flies. <laughs> um, and check out Memoria because it's, it's really something not very common. Nowadays, releasing a Blu-ray only acoustic with many people there involved with really a nice location in the background and it's it's a one once in a lifetime experience so yeah thank you very much and hope to see you soon all right thank you so much your was an honor to this interview with you thank oh. you man and uh, hope to see you one day in person <laughs>